Um, I'm going to talk about autism. And today, I'm wearing my favorite brooch. It's a tiger. And this tiger stands for the power and the strength needed to raise Thomas. Like this little tiger cub, this cute tiger, my son, Thomas, is very vulnerable because the world is very hostile. People don't really know a lot about autism. And because they are ignorant and they lack understanding and they are impatient with them, the world is like a jungle for them. This tiger teaches her cub how to hunt on their own. We teach our cats, teach our killed children to be independent. What do you want for your children? You want them to be happy, have nice friends, good relationships, a job? So that is what I wish for Thomas. This talk is about autism, and I'm speaking about autism spectrum disorder, in short, ASD. It's about a group that is normal to highly intelligent, the biggest group of people with autism. And when you have autism, you have trouble with social interaction and communication. Raising a child takes a lot of time. It's very demanding. But did you know that raising a child with autism takes parents a thousand years, a thousand hours extra a year. So you can do the counting. My husband and I spent 20 hours extra a week on Thomas. Almost three hours a day. And you're thinking, what? So many hours? Where do those hours go to? Well, they are for the same things when you raise a child. Taking him to sports, school, friends, personal hygiene. But with autism, it takes longer. It's more intense. So, for example, we still bring Thomas to sports. He's 12 years now, because he easily gets distracted, so he will bump into someone else, or worse, into a car. Let's go on with this count. Thomas is now 12. He's in first year of high school. So we spent about 5,000 hours extra care on him to discover that three high schools rejected him because of his autism. In the Netherlands, 16,000 children have problems and don't go to school. Not all of them can be contributed to autism, but a large part can. And to go on, to go to college, 10,000 hours of extra care. And then there are a lot of colleges who are not able to, to give good education to people with autism. 15,000 hours, or even 20,000 hours. And then the workplace isn't ready for really capable workers. 75% of the people with autism don't have a gainful job. So that worries me. And why is this? I think people look very negatively at autism. It's like a disorder. It's chronic. It's incurable. And that's true. You're handicapped. What if we can change our vision on autism? What if we look at it more positively? So my wish is to create a different perspective on autism and to look at it at the positive side and at the talents and not as an autism spectrum disorder, but as autism spectrum difference. So what do you think of when you think of an autistic person? Rayman, uh, Bill Gates, or maybe uh, a silent boy sitting in the corner, banging his head, shaking his head all day? Well, this is Thomas. He's 12 years now. Uh, he's showing his own robot, a built robot, Lego robot, and truck. And this robot can drive on its own, is controlled by my iPhone, and it even can select colors. He's in high school now, and he wants to study robotics in Eindhoven, and after that, go on to MIT in Boston. And there, he wants to work on the space elevator. 
And maybe, maybe he says that in the time he's ready to go to Boston, it will already be there. So the space elevator, you can put things into space very fast and cheap. Thomas's brain is wired differently, so he perceives the world differently. And maybe you can imagine that when you come to a new country where you've never been for, before, that they have different habits. Or when you come to work for the first time, or a new school. It's a little bit like an alien traveling through the, world, through the Earth and not know, not, who doesn't know what the world is like living on, on the Earth. I shouldn't be nervous about this, but I am. <laughs> so, um, Thomas can, as he says himself, simple things are difficult for me, and difficult things are simple for me. So he can explain to you what the prime number is, but he can't tie his shoelaces. So we had to find some sneakers with Velcro, because you can't ask your classmates to tie your shoelaces. And that's not a big problem for me. What is worrisome is that Thomas has blind mind blindness. So his mind, he can't feel or know what other people are thinking. Um, for, I think that's why people with autism find it hard to lie, tell a white lie, because they don't, can't understand that, we, that I or you may be thinking something differently. So when you ask him, what do you think of my haircut, or what do you think of this skirt, and how does it look on me, you will get an honest answer. Um, next to this, there is the sensory sensitivity. Uh, it's like uh, food, smell, and for Thomas, it's definitely bright light. So he is something, he's sitting there, somewhere up there, but this is very bright. And uh, when we go to the dentist, he wears my ski glasses. And there is also an excellent hearing. So he can't block out uh, the noise that, that's always there. So it's like a boom blaster on his shoulder, at full sound, and you can't turn it off. So when he's making a test in the classroom, he will hear all the ticking of the clock, or other students making noises, and he will be distracted. I realized a few years ago that when people know more about autism, they can understand better what autism is about. So we started Autism Café with four mothers, and we organized all kinds of events just to make people more aware and share our knowledge about autism. Um, for example, movie nights, theater performances, and every, we every year on World Autism Day, that's in the beginning of April, we join Light It Up Blue, and we put big buildings into blue light. I told you already some numbers, and about the future of Thomas, Will he be able to pursue his goals? Will he be able to make a career in high tech or whatever he wants? And so, it's time for the next step. I want to start an autism campus. And on this autism campus, people can learn, work and live. There will be a rebound high school, so that means that when students feel ready, they can return to their old school. A campus sounds close and uh, protective, but it's also open. The Latin word means open field. So teachers can come there and learn about autism and come, go back to their own school and practice what they learned. Um, when you are, the school should be autism friendly. And autism friendly is about accommodation, accommodations and modifications. So you can accommodate Thomas, to, for example, to put him in the front row or to give him some more time for a test. You can modify your lessons too. Um, for, I saw this picture once, and it's about a gymnastic lesson, and you have a giraffe, a monkey and a turtle. It's not a joke. They have, and the gymnastic teachers ask them, 
Okay, you guys, climb that tree. So that is what gymnastic is like for Thomas. It isn't modified to him. Next to the school, there will be living. Some apartments where people can practice to live on their own. It won't be permanent, but just for a short time of period. And the biggest thing, what I'm very passionate about is, I would like to start up a company. A company to provide work. Not work to fill the day, not simple work, but work at high level. Of course, there should be some IT, but it could also be law or accounting or creativity. And I think that when we give a good example, employers around us will see what the benefits could be of hiring people with ASD. So can we look at it much more positively and focus on the strengths and their talents instead of the weaknesses? What I also would like, and maybe it would be good for all of us, is when people come to work somewhere, they get a menu. So, um, what kind of noise level do you work well with? What kind of light level? Should there be windows in your office? Can you work in an office garden, or can't you? Uh, what kind of instructions? What's the best way to give you instructions? Should it be in writing, or could it be oral, or both? And in which way can I appraise your work? So maybe this would be good for all of us, just to tell in advance where you work best with. So all comes back to autism spectrum difference. Well, this is Thomas. And he's sitting up there, I already told. I can't see you, unfortunately, but I know he's there. And he will tell me that my English... Uh, this is for you. So in this world is nirvana for him. It's uh, computers, technology. He even hacked the computer site from his school last week. So, yeah. I hope there is no one from the school inside because in truth, I'm a little bit proud of it, <laughs> but OK. Um, uh, there is the Internet of Things, but also, in the future, he will have to work in teams. He has to um, be social. Um, so uh, he has to be adapt to, adapt to a lot of change. And that worries me. And what Thomas does, he does his best to fit in into this world. He has been to all kinds of therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, speech therapists, physiotherapists, uh, can I, I'm forgetting someone. That's the, that one. He has done many trainings already, just to fit in. And he's on medicine, which flattens his spirit, only in the, not in the weekends. And when I think of it, that makes me sad, because it feels like I not accepting my son the way he is, that I'm molding him into something different, something what we think is normal. I don't longer want to change him. I don't longer want to mold him. I just want to accept my son with all his differences. I want him to be himself. And what we need for that is change. Thomas does his best to change. He really wants to belong to this world and be just like you and me. But what if we change? We change our perspective. That is what I really wish for. And Thomas would like to say it himself. Or is just one quote I'm forgetting in all my nerves. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Claire Scovel Lazepnik, I hope I is my good pronunciation. Don't think that's a different, better child hiding behind the autism. This is your child. Love the child in front of you, encourage his strengths, celebrate his quirks, and improve his weaknesses, the way you would with any child. And the change, I already asked for you, has to come from us, from you and me. 
And that is what Tom is going to say now. If we can change a man, we can change the world. Please. Please help us support the change. And we can start right here, right now. Thank you.